Good morning folks, my name is Neil and what I want to talk to you to about today is some of the clocks that I have in my Electric Master Clock collection. So we'll start by having a look at this one here. This is a Smith's one second Pendulum Master. I've had this clock for a couple of years, so I've only had it going recently. Not an easy clock to get running and a fairly crude mechanism, similar to a uh, single node. But the main problem with this clock is that the armature is a long way from the magnet, so the armature is this steel uh, part here which is attracted by the armature after each impulse and it's a long way from the magnet so it takes quite a bit of current and voltage to uh, to return the gravity arm to its uh, position. It's also a fairly noisy clock. I don't know how uh, how good a timekeeper it's going to be because I haven't, ha haven't had it running for that long. Fairly noisy and uh, and not a very pleasant sound when uh, when the gravity arm is returned to battery. It's got quite a nice case and quite a nice face on the clock and it should restore quite nicely with a little bit of oil. This one here is a TMC half second master clock. It's a very busy clock and quite noisy but not a bad timekeeper. Just take the cover off so we can have a look inside. This is a hip toral clock, very nicely made, um, it's easy to disassemble and, uh, and reassemble. The, the face comes off with two screws and uh, the uh, various parts of the clock are, are very easily disassembled for, uh, for overhaul and repair and it's actually quite a good timekeeper. See the hip toggle mechanism just here. And the next item of the collection is a C7 Gents, which is a quite a common clock in New Zealand. Very robust, heavy mechanism, built like the proverbial British outhouse. Uh, easy to get going and uh, very reliable. Quite noisy on the impulse, heavy magnets, uh, heavy contacts and uh, a very robust mechanism. The 30 second count wheel has one deep tooth and when that deep tooth comes around, it allows the unlatching mechanism to drop the gravity arm down onto the pendulum, which gives the pendulum an impulse. There's a, a deep tooth coming up now in two seconds. One second, now. And this is the uh, back of the face. A nicely made clock, and I've got several variations of, uh, of this clock, all with different faces. Some have this uh, wooden bar across underneath the face, some don't, and two or three variations of hand. This is one of my favourites. This is also a Gents. This is a Gents Post Office 36, and it's a hip toggle clock. One can see the the hip toggle mechanism down there. 
invented by Matthias Hipp back in the 1800s, as I recall. That was the hip action just then. So what happens is when this when the pendulum slows down, eventually the um, the the toggle, which uh, is there, over centres on that uh, agate block, and is pushed up to make the set of contacts here, and that set of contacts energises this electromagnet, which uh, provides a uh, an impulse to the uh, to the pendulum. This is actually a good timekeeper especially when I don't open the door. The escape wheel on the right is uh, 30, 30 seconds and the one on the left provides a series of impulses for other, other uses. This clock has a synchroniser on it which allows the whole battery of these clocks to be synchronised to the same time. Um, for example uh, if a uh, uh, if um, a rail system had these at various stations throughout the country, uh, all of the clocks can be synchronised on a single single wire by operating this synchroniser here, which uh, returns the minute wheel back to the same position on all clocks at the same time by impulsing this coil here, and that brings every. Uh, wheel to the same position on the full length of the country and so of course all of the clocks are then synchronised to the same time. I actually modified the, uh, the, the uh, face on this clock so that it's driven from a small relay rather than use the contacts of the clock to guide the movement in order to, uh, uh, to save the contacts. This clock keeps pretty good time. <coughs> This one here is also made by Gents. This is a Post Office 46. It has no, no face and is used purely to generate uh, impulses, time, timing pulses. I've got uh, some LEDs down here which show two of the outputs. And I have another LED here. Also a hip toggle clock, and you can just see the, the toggle in behind the back of the back of the pendulum there. This is a half second, and I believe it was used for uh, providing timing pulses for toll calls uh, back in the old days, uh, when tolls were manually uh, controlled and manually charged. And uh, as I understand it, the um, uh, the clock uh, uh, generated a series of uh, ink marks on a chart recorder. And at the end of the toll call, the operator would count the number of uh, marks on the piece of paper, and that was how how the uh, how you were charged. I've only ever seen one of these clocks. This is the only one I've ever seen, and I don't believe they're terribly common in New Zealand. Uh, not sure about elsewhere. This is probably the most accurate clock in my collection. This is the an IBM Master. It's called a Remontoir clock because the pendulum is impulsed uh, with a mainspring, from the mainspring, it has a, what they call a Graham escapement, and the, the spring is rewound about once an hour uh, with an electric solenoid, so it's a mechanical clock that is electrically rewound. So unlike the others where the, where the pendulum is impulsed uh, with a gravity arm or magnetically, uh, this clock is impulsed every second from the, uh, the Graham escapement. This is the most accurate clock in my collection and I would probably adjust it two or three times a year at the most. And that's generally because there's been an earthquake in New Zealand or because I've opened the door for some reason or other. With all my clocks I like to run the pendulum a little slow and then I bring 
the pendulum up to speed uh, by adding small weights or coins to the top of the pendulum and I find that easier and more reliable than trying to adjust the, uh, uh, the rating with the rating nut on the bottom of the pendulum. It means you don't have to disturb the, uh, the pendulum by adding, when you add the weights. These two clocks here are synchronomes, both uh, very similar uh, motion works but uh, different clocks. This is a, a, a normal synchronome. When I say normal, one of the more common synchronomes. Quite finicky to get going and, and I haven't found them to be good timekeepers. So uh, they'll go well for a month or two or three and then suddenly uh, gain or lose for no apparent reason. But they're quite sought after and uh, more valuable than most of the other ones that I've got in the collection. Again, I've got some coins on the on top of the pendulum. And this one here is also a synchronome, but it's been modified in New Zealand by ASEA, an electrical company that uh, don't exist any longer. And it was used to regulate uh, the generators in the Waikari, Lake Waikari Moana power station. So the, uh, the, the, the mechanical clock was the master timekeeper, and the red display on the left is a synchronous clock which ran at mains frequency from the from the generators and the small display on the right uh, was the error between the uh, master and the generator so if there was a, an error in one direction then the operator would uh, increase the amount of water to the generators and speed up the frequency and vice versa this is a very nice uh, a nice clock in, in good condition and a few extra bits and pieces for for the generator control these, both these synchronomes actually sound different the impulse. This um, mechanism just here operated once per second. I don't actually have it connected at the moment. The, um, the gathering pallet has, uh, has, been, has been taken out and I don't have it running because it was quite noisy and quite busy and it also uh, provided some more load on the pendulum. This clock's got quite a nice feature. Uh, in order to regulate the pendulum you can add a weight to the weight tray and you can do that without opening the case and, and I would imagine that uh, when it was in the power station being used the operator would uh, set the clock from the time signals on the radio and if the uh, clock was running a little slow uh, then without opening the case you could lower, the, lower this weight onto the, onto the weight tray uh, and speed up the pendulum by a, a second or so per week and then when the pendulum was, when the clock was back on speed, then lift the weight off the off the weight tray. So quite quite nice. I haven't actually calibrated that, but I would guess it's a second or so per week. And again, I've got some coins on the pendulum to uh, to regulate it. Unfortunately, in New Zealand we get quite a few earthquakes, and so you can spend a, a month or two or three trying to get your regulation exactly right, and then. Uh, in the middle of the night there'll be an earthquake, come to work next morning and find uh, all of the clocks stopped. So this is the back of the, of the two additional movements. The one on the right is the, uh, uh, is the synchronous movement and the one on the left is the error display. And 
that's the the main main movement. And last but not least, uh, a Timco clock which I purchased quite recently, and uh, it's a quite a nice looking nice looking cabinet, nice looking face. This clock, this clock actually also keeps a very very good time. Uh, which surprises me because there's nothing special about the movement. It's not too different from a synchronome. Not, not as nicely made as the synchronome, um, but for some reason this clock is a very good timekeeper. Not, not very easy to disassemble and reassemble. It's, um, it hasn't been made with, uh, with repair in mind. It was quite tricky to, uh, to overhaul this clock when I first got it. And that's the, uh, the back of the movement. Quite, uh, quite crude, the, uh, uh, some of the manufacture. Almost, almost looks homemade. But as I say, it keeps very good time. And again, I have the... Uh, some weights on the uh, on the pendulum. I've got this clock running on a off a 12 volt uh, rechargeable lead acid battery, uh, which lasts a, a month or so. But a nice, nice looking face. Okay, well thanks folks and thanks for watching.